Welcome back to our series on First Enoch. Last time we were looking at the text, we were in chapter 7, verse 1. And today we'll pick up the rest of chapter 7, verses 2 through 6. We're going to read the text uh, one section of time and comment on it. First Enoch 7, verse 2. And the women conceived and bore to the, them great giants, and the giants begot Nephilim, and they were growing in accordance with their greatness. So we have the watchers coming down in human form, assuming human form, marrying and bringing forth children. This is something that's never happened before. It's something that crosses all sorts of boundaries in the spirit, and it will get God stirred up, and God will do something about this situation very soon. So they're coming down, and they're having marital relations with their wives, and children are being born. They're very large offspring, and they will be teaching them forbidden things. They're growing according to their nature. There's there's different difficulties sometimes figuring out exactly what's happening in the book of Enoch, which you won't know unless you are reading like a technical commentary, because the state of the text of Enoch is pretty shaky in some places. Uh, it goes back over 2,000 years. It was found among the Dead Sea Scrolls, the original Aramaic, which was then translated into Greek, which was then translated into Ethiopic. And in many cases, the shape of the text is kind of shaky. So sometimes there's a little uncertainty about the exact nature of what's happening, and this is one of them. Suffice it, suffice it to say that giants are being brought forth onto the earth, and we'll see in verse 3 what's going on. It says about the giants, they were devouring the labor of all the sons of men, and men were not able to supply them. So we don't know how many giants are being born. We don't know what their appetites are or anything like this. But what the text tells us is that they are basically running through the entire food supply of planet Earth in order to take care of their appetites and needs and desires. It says that people were not able to supply the amount of food that the giants were requiring. This is very serious. I mean, this has never happened. Imagine a famine and you have these huge giants that are eating incredible amounts and they're coming and saying, give me more food. You need to give me food. And it's like, there's no more. There's no more. And verse four, the giants began to kill men and to devour them. Now we're into a very much more serious level of outrageous behavior. The giants are everywhere. They're eating up everything in sight and people are not able to supply them. So now they're eating the people. You can, I can only imagine what this looked like. It's very, very serious stuff. Verse five, now the giants they began to sin against the birds and beasts and creeping things and the fish and to devour one another's flesh. So now that they've gone through the food and they've eaten people, now they're going after everything else that's alive on the earth. And it says they began to sin against them. Now, the nature of this sin is not specified. This uh, section is also duplicated in the Book of Giants, another book found at Qumran among the Dead Sea Scrolls, and it also reinforces this point. Likewise, it doesn't exactly say what the giants were doing, but uh, it says they're sinning against the animals and the fish and the birds and everything else that's alive on the earth. We can only imagine what that looked like, but it was extremely horrific. And suffice it to say, this has never happened before. God created animals and fish and birds and everything else that creeps on the earth and people. And now the giants are out there. They, they're killing and eating people. They're sinning against other living things in a way that we're not told, but we can imagine it's very gruesome and disgusting. 
and it says they began to devour one another's flesh. Now the giants are starting to eat each other. The bloodshed that's going on here is just beyond horrific and they're drinking the blood. Now, in Jewish thought, in the ancient Hebrew scriptures, the greatest taboo, you might say, you could make a case for which is more taboo, but one of the greatest taboos is drinking or consuming the blood of a, of a living thing or a thing that has just been killed. This goes in, up, right up against the very essence of life. It says in the word, that the life is in the blood. And when people or some other creature consume the blood along with this thing that has recently been living, this is a very, very serious thing. You may remember in Acts 15, when they said, okay, the Gentiles that are coming into the kingdom, they don't have to keep the law, they don't have to follow Torah, but they're going, they said four, four things. And one of them is, do not consume blood. And to this day, if you have kosher laws, you have halal laws uh, among the Muslims, the blood must be drained in a certain way from an animal that's being slaughtered in order for it to be able to be consumed the proper way. So these giants are just making a complete, disgusting, horrific mess out of the earth. And Verse 6 of chapter 7, then the earth brought accusation against the lawless ones. The earth cries out. Now, you see that sometimes the earth cries out. Sometimes things that we would consider to be inanimate, like rocks or trees. Jesus said, if you get in the way of my disciples singing forth the praises of the one who's sent from God, the rocks will cry out. Here it says the earth cries out and the earth is crying out to heaven saying, you must intervene, O creator. Creator, your creation is perishing and you must take action. The word that's used in Aramaic in this passage for bringing accusation, it's the word that you would use if you're going to court and you are suing somebody to force them to do something to stop this or start something this is the kind of thing that's going on. It's very, very serious stuff. This has never been seen in creation up to this point. So we have the watchers, the angels coming down and creating a terrible, terrible situation, which is going against everything God wanted and everything God created the earth to be and everything that God wanted to do and see going on on the earth. There's bloodshed everywhere. There is practically not a living thing going on here, and it is extremely serious. This is the situation where you see ourselves in this passage. Now, if you go back to Genesis, you'll see that the, the situation on the earth had gotten to the point where God had to do something. That's where you are right now. The reason for the flood is not just, well, because of the fall, you have people are sinful and they're doing bad stuff and everything that's come into their mind is always evil all the time. It's beyond that. A lot of the reason for the flood is to take care of the situation created by the watchers and their offspring, the giants. And soon we are going to take that up in our series on First Enoch. And we urge you to subscribe to our channel Look around, see what's being posted, and hope to see you again soon.